We have a feature topic every week, and this week's feature topic is everyone's favorite, compression. What is compression? Compression is actually reducing the overall volume of your audio by squashing down the peaks. So if you imagine a sound that has lots of peaks, what compression actually does is it pushes down from the top and then there's something called makeup gain that pulls everything back up. So instead of having very peaky audio, you have audio with a flatter top, but it doesn't go down as low. It's pretty much as simple as that because the confusing thing is people think compression and they think things like zip files, like file compression. Audio compression doesn't have anything to do with file compression. It's a different beast. So in terms of audio compression, what you're basically doing is compressing the peaks. That's why it's called compression. You compress the top of the audio and then you bring up the rest of the audio so that you have a more consistent level. Now, this is good for things like vocals, things like guitars, any sort of dynamic instrument. And yes, your vocals are an instrument where you are battling that constant battle of trying to get an even performance. So if I'm singing like this and then I sing like this and then I sing like this and then I sing like this, a compressor is going to grab those louder parts and bring them down a little bit, and then we pull everything back up, and then you get it uh, at a nice level. Now, you can over-compress. You can do, do what we call squashing or uh, over-limiting your audio, and that means you remove any dynamic range. And the, the full name of compression is dynamic range compression, because what you are actually doing is compressing your dynamic range. So you are making the louder parts actually less loud, but then what you're doing is you're bringing the quieter parts up. So instead of having a big variance between your you're loud and you're soft, which you do want in music, you do want some dynamic range, you have much less variance between loud and soft. That's the explanatory stuff. If you are more a visual person, let's jump into a couple of uh, explanations here and a couple of charts. Now, this is just at Wikipedia. I, I recommend Wikipedia for a lot of things. If you search dynamic range compression on Wikipedia and read that article, that's, that's the best way. Like You can watch videos and you can listen to other people's explanation, but if you want to dive in, if you like me and you're a nerd and you like the detail, jump into the Wikipedia article. It's one of the better written articles uh, on Wikipedia. And and there's a bunch of information in there, but what I like is these charts because these really helped me start understanding what compression was all about. Because there's a bunch of things that you need to, to understand. One is the threshold and one is the ratio. We'll talk attack and release in a moment, but the threshold is a ratio of how much compression you're going to get when you add a compressor. The threshold is at what volume it actually starts doing that. So you can see on this chart here, we've got output level on the left, we've got input level on the bottom there, on the x-axis and the y-axis if you like. And as volume goes up here through the middle, this is your standard volume, as you bring the threshold down, it will start compressing. But how much it compresses is based on what ratio? So a ratio of one to one, is no compression. So you can see there, it doesn't matter where you put your threshold, and if you, I'll show you this in GarageBand in a minute, doesn't matter where you put your threshold, right down the bottom or right up the top, nothing will happen because it is not compressing. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. If you add a two-to-one ratio, that means it compresses halfway there. So you can see there that from flattened out, which is the infinity we'll talk about in a minute, it goes to that, to two-to-one ratio. You go to a four-to-one ratio, it means it brings it down four times as much towards that flat. And then at infinity, which is also called a limiter or a brick wall limiter, it completely flattens that out. So when you bring the threshold down, it will crush off all of the peaks. And that's important to know because you want to use different ratios of compression for different purposes. For your vocals, you may want to use some light compression, two-to-one, four-to-one. You want to really crush that kick drum or snare, maybe you want to go at 8 to 1 or a 10 to 1 or even an infinite compression, which is your limiting. So that's the basic explanation of what's going on with a compressor. Let's take a look at some more things. Now, this one gets a little bit more detailed, and this one's explaining more of the attack and the release time. The way you can look at this and, and go into this in more detail if you want in your own time, but the way to think about it is the attack is when, how long should it wait before it compresses? So a very fast attack time means it will, as soon as it goes over a certain level, over your threshold level, it will compress. So if it's like a, a half, like a zero millisecond, means compression is going to kick in the second the compressor detects that your volume has gone over the threshold. A longer attack time means it'll give a bit of leeway. So if you want to make sure, so this 
this is good for mastering. If you want a bit of leeway between when it goes over. So say you have a little tiny peak that goes over, you may not want your compressor to get excited and suddenly start compressing. You may want it to give a little bit of space. So maybe you put in a, a half a second, like 500 milliseconds, or maybe even just like 100 milliseconds to have a slower, rele a slower attack time. Release time is the exact opposite of that. Once it starts compressing, how quickly will it stop? Because remember, a compressor is just monitoring your audio over time. As soon as it goes over that level, the compressor kicks in at whatever threshold and ratio you've set. And based on your attack settings is how quickly it actually starts. Based on your release settings, if you have a fast release, as soon as that audio level drops again, it goes away. If you have a longer, slower release, it will keep pumping it, keep pushing it up there for a longer period of time in case the audio goes back up again. So again, these are just things to experiment with. Faster or slower attack time, faster or slower release time. Experiment, play, have fun with your compression. Let's look at this next one because knee is something that comes up. So it's another thing. I won't spend much time on this because honestly, I don't really ever use knee settings when it comes to compressors. But this just shows the difference between a hard knee where it goes straight up to there and straight across and a soft knee, which basically just softens that compression you can see over there. So yeah, do you need to change the knee setting? Probably not. But if you do and you want to learn about knees, <laughs> you can check it out there. And this one is really fascinating. So this is is showing the effects of compression or more correctly limiting on a song. Now this is the song Something by the Beatles and this is showing the different masters between 19, when was the first one? 1983 to 1987 to 1993 to 2000. And this is showing, this is a good visual indication of what compression is doing. So if we look at the difference there, the, the first one there's, it's, it's really low there and it doesn't have any sort of range. By 1993, I'd, I'd say that that's kind of a really good level of compression. You can see there we've still got a heap of dynamic range between the quiet and the soft parts, but it's not going over the top. If you look at that 2000 one that keeps flopping up there, see how it's got those straight bits at the top and the bottom? That means that it's pushing all the way up to maximum volume, or what we call zero dB, which is in my view, a little bit overcompressed. For a song like this, for a ballad like something by the Beatles, do you really want it to be that level of compression? Well, that's where we've kind of got to, because around about 2000, something called the Loudness Wars, and yes, we blame you, Metallica, for your album. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it now, but it's, there's a, an album synonymous with being overcompressed. But yeah, that's what's basically been happened. So if you are compressing and if you are compressing your masters or your mixes, keep that in mind that you probably do want to keep something a little bit more like 93 and maybe not quite like 2000. And by the way, that 2000, if you, if you had a 2020 version of most people's songs, it, it, they're what I call sausages. They just go straight across the top. They're just no dynamic range at all. So try not to sausage your stuff uh, because yeah, it, it won't be good. Let's finish up with a quick practical demo, shall we? So we'll jump here into GarageBand with one I prepared earlier. Uh, here we go. So I have a vocal here in GarageBand. We'll bring that one up here. Vocal here in GarageBand, and we'll jump in and show you what a compressor actually looks like and sounds like. So if we come in here, you can see we've got the compressor set here. Now, your compressor in GarageBand doesn't actually have a release setting, but it does have a threshold, it has a ratio, and it has an attack setting. This gain is like a makeup gain. So if you, it does have auto makeup gain, which is another thing to keep in mind. As we do the compression threshold down here, it will automatically turn up the gain. If we we want more of it, we can turn it up here on the gain dial. Uh, it goes back to minus four. And the other thing to keep in mind is this mix knob is just how much compression. So if, if you put it 100%, it's going to compress all of the audio. Like most plugins, you can actually reduce the amount of the plugin that's being applied to your audio. So keep that in mind as well. But if we just, we've got this vocal soloed here, let's turn the compressor off first of all, and the vocal sounds a little bit like this. When you open your eyes up. Now, if we want to start compressing this, we turn the compressor on and we just hit play. When you open your eyes up. So it starts getting louder, yeah, because we're starting to remove some of those peaks and troughs. And then if we uh, really compress it, so if we say, like we were showing before, we bring the ratio right back down here. So the compressor's on a lot more often. And when it is on, we bring the ratio up to like a 10 to 1, it means, or 11 to 1, it means it's going to compress it a lot more. Let's take a listen. When you open your eyes up. 
So you can hear there, it's a lot crispier. It's bringing out a lot more of the audio because it is crushing the top and bringing the rest up. We'll turn it off and then I'll play it and turn it on and you'll hear the difference between non-compressed and compressed audio here on my vocal. When you open your eyes up to the sky Not compressed. above and you see the world. Compressed. There. So yeah, and again, we can change the attack if we want it to make sure it kicks in straight away. We can adjust threshold, we can adjust, adjust ratio. Let's just show you, <laughs> we'll go to 30 to 1 with a big thing here. Let's just show you what I mean by sort of over compressing or crushing. If we put this compressor on here and let's merge this track. So merging will actually mix this down to its own stereo track. We'll hit the merge button there. This will just give you a visual indication of what we're talking about when we're talking about compression. Uh, there it is. Oh, it hasn't, it hasn't compressed it as much as I thought it would have. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, I was expecting it to be all crunchy, but I think GarageBand's, GarageBand was fighting here because it has some auto normalization that it kicks in there. So it's trying to protect me from myself. If it wasn't GarageBand, if it was a different kind of DAW, uh, that would just be all completely crushed. So if we take a listen to this one. When you open your eyes up, to the sky above. So it is. it has actually kept in a little bit of the dynamic range. If we undo that one, we'll go back to here. Uh, but yeah, be careful with that because you are, it's very tempting to over compress things if you get excited. And remember, compression can be used. It's your friend. It's a tool, uh, but it try, try to keep it on the subtle side. It is very good on all of your different instruments and especially on vocals and guitars and things that have more dynamic range if you want to level and flatten them out a little bit. I hope you found that one useful.